Last week, I took the Terminator in to Austin Speed Shop to have the drivetrain refurbished. And I was under the impression that all of the electronics in the vehicle still work. Unfortunately, the key fob remote that I used to open the doors is no longer functioning. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised that unit's over 30 years old. The company that originally manufactured it, VSE, is no longer in business. So I don't have the ability to get into the shop and do a lot of work on the Terminator. So I needed to come up with a solution that would allow me to open the doors without uh, going through and refurbishing everything. And so first of all, I want to thank everyone for their suggestions. The solution I came up with was actually uh, a real inexpensive product that I purchased on Amazon. It comes with a small receiver that drives four relays. And the unit actually comes with four key fob remotes. The whole system was under $20. And believe it or not, it actually works really well. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook it up and give you a brief demonstration. So the unit actually is about, you know, two, two and a half inches by one and a half inches in, the, in size. So it's not very big. There are four relays on there, and each relay is rated for 20 amps. Um, the first step is to actually program the key fob remotes. That was actually really easy. You just press the small button on the receiver board to put it in pairing mode. And then you press any button on the key fob remote and it will automatically pair. So I was able to pair all four of these key fob remotes in about one minute or less. It was actually really easy. Now, like most of the Chinese-made products that you get on Amazon, you need a secret decoder ring to figure out the uh, documentation, if there is any documentation, actually. And for whatever reason, uh, the relays are laid out on the board in some ambiguous, arbitrary manner. Um, it defies logic, but it still works. I went through and used a continuity tester to actually identify each of the relays, and then I used a label maker to label them so I could figure out what was going on. Now the relays are DP, excuse me, SPDT relays. That means they have a, a common wiper and then a normally closed and a normally open uh, terminal. So there are three pins uh, or three screws on this terminal strip for each relay. And let me just demonstrate briefly. I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to put the meter here in continuity mode. This is something I'm sure most of you use. You just want to be able to determine when there's a short uh, so the unit will beep. So anyway, if you come over here and um, these three terminals here are associated with relay B. And so the one in the middle is the common wiper. And that's the normally closed pin. Now I'm going to switch over and I have the wiper and I'm looking at the normally open terminal and when I press button B oh, got to turn on power nothing electrical works unless you turn it on alright now let's give it a shot So the relays can be set up so that they're either momentary or they latch. Momentary is the way I'm going to use it. So the relay will stay energized as long as you press the button. Perfect. Um, also, since I want to be uh, putting this in, I don't want to have any trouble. I went ahead and attached one of the actuator mechanisms just for test purposes. And it is connected to... Uh, button D or channel D and you can see when I push the button it energizes the actuator now it's a good thing that the relays are 20 amp because these actuators can draw five or six amps when they're engaged and if the uh, uh, wire gauge is too small or the relay doesn't have adequate contact size or rating then there could be a voltage drop and the actuator may not work the last thing I wanted to do is to identify what frequency these transmitters were working at. So I'm using my spectrum analyzer. This is an RF spectrum analyzer. It, it's, it works the same as an RTA, the same way an RTA works for audio. 
except this is for radio frequency uh, signals. And I'm just going to, normally you'd use an antenna, but I just want to know what the frequency is. I don't need an accurate measurement of the ab absolute power. So when I push a button, and there it is. It's uh, around 433.875 megahertz. And the good news is at that frequency, we should get good range, um, probably at least uh, 50 meters, maybe even 100 meters. I only need about 5 or 10 meters, but it's always better to have additional uh, range than to have something that doesn't work. So anyway, in the next few days, I'm going to go down to Austin Speed Shop. I'm going to just uh, cut out the receiver module that's in there and install this one. I don't think it'll take me more than five or ten minutes. The wires are already there. I just need to cut them and then insert them into this terminal strip. And that'll give everyone uh, that's working on the car the ability to open the doors. So thanks for watching and thanks again for all of the feedback.